impressive, Sam. He takes one dribble and gets all the way to the bucket from the three-point line. Mm. But he is probably one of the most efficient scorers I've ever seen. Yeah, we know how great he is. Four straight wins for the Nets. But, of course, we had to ask James Hart about that play, right? James, this is a grinded-out kind of game. What's the key as a group to persevering on nights like this? Um, I think just locking in on defense. Uh, we're going to make... Not indeed Elvis, but we will hear what he has to say a little bit later. Uh, Sam, he, James Hart. He was not having that interview. He cut it off. <laughs> Nine turnovers as well. We saw Russell Westbrook with a quadruple hobble is what they called it, where you have, you know, double-figure turnovers as well. Nine turnovers, but the Nets as a team only had 16. So disciplined outside of James Harden put you in uh, coach's shoes. What do you say to him after a game like that in a play like that where he just gives up on it? Absolutely nada. What is it to say? James Harden, when he goes back and we look at the tape, he knows. Now, I would have a private, short conversation with him, but I wouldn't make a big deal out of it because everyone else is talking about it. His teammates, before they get in the locker room, the fact that they won the game, Smitty, his teammates are going to be cracking the jokes, giving him a hard time. I may join in and crack a joke add some levity to it, and then I may the next day tomorrow morning, when we walk out on practice, I may put my arms around him and say, hey, James, look, we can't ever let that happen again. I know what you were thinking. You probably thought the shot clock was going to expire, but look, we got to get into the game, and they happen. 82 games, James Harden had a long offseason, coming back from an injury. His body's not in shape yet. He's trying to work himself and play himself in the shape and win games at the same time with no Kyrie Irving. So, with all those things going on, and you know this guy loves to play. Smith, if it was anyone else, I might have been concerned. But James Harden, if he's not hurt, he plays all summer. So I might join in on the levity, not make a big deal out of it because they won the game, and his teammates are going to hold him more accountable. All right, well, we've heard from <clears throat> Sam on the matter and how he would handle it. Let's hear from James Harden. James, this is a grinded-out kind of game. What's the key as a group to persevering on nights like this? Um, I think just locking in on defense. Uh, we're going to make shots, timely shots when they count. Um, I think just defensively, we, we let up in, you know, late in that fourth, early in that fourth quarter. They, they gained confidence. Uh, K started making shots. Um, their entire team started making shots, getting to the basket, basically doing it all. So we had to kind of settle in the game and, and, and get stops when we needed to and uh, get some timely buckets. <clears throat> Matched your point total from the first half in the third quarter alone. How would you describe the way the intensity went up in that period? It looked like you and, and Kevin really got it going. Yeah, we just we just we got stops in transition. We had an extra burst. We made shots and we put it all together. <clears throat> when we do that, I, mean, I think we had a 39 yeah 39 point quarter. So uh, I mean, we were getting stops. We were doing what we we're supposed to. <clears throat> that fourth quarter, we just we let up a little bit and uh, they gained confidence and it's a ball game. Well, actually, they were they were within two, and then Kevin scored uh, six straight points. Is that him just taking over on his own, or are you guys looking for him calling? Yeah, we just called. I mean, I called call sets, and uh, we executed the sets very, very well. Um, our screening, um, our positioning, and our spacing. And I think that um, we just gave Kevin room to do what he does. And I mean, execution down the stretch was was pretty solid. Uh, whether he makes a shot or misses a shot, I think you know we did a really good job of, of being in the right right space. James, what did you uh, see in Kate coming in tonight? Uh, he's aggressive. He's aggressive. I feel like uh, I mean I didn't really get a chance to watch him play uh, last night, but I feel like tonight he was he was very aggressive. Uh, you know, got good size and uh, his, his jumper look you know confident. Um, get to the basket. You know, he just got to continue to keep going, continue to. Keep working and, uh, and building that confidence in his, in his game. If a guy is uh, struggling from the field, and, but he's getting on the shot profile, he's getting all the looks that he normally would get, I mean, how do you kind of help him through that struggle on the court? And B, do you think a person like this can help Blake, you know, kind of? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, and I tell him consistently, he's probably tired of me, but I tell him consistently, like, 
when, uh, when he's open, shoot the ball, have confidence. You know, that's what you're out there for. You know, you, you do your thing on defense, take charges. You know, you play extremely hard. But offensively, when you got opportunities to shoot, you know, which is often shoot the ball, like have that confidence. And these, I feel like these last two games, he's, he's you know, he's making shots, but he's shooting with confidence. And, and continuously, I think it's my job, not only Blake, but just our entire team to make sure that uh, guys are, are confident and, and, you know, are able to do what they do um, at the highest level every single night. Going back to Canada, what kind of atmosphere are you expecting in the next one? Well, excited. You know, it's been a minute. Um, they got one of the best fan bases. Um, so it's going to be exciting. They're a scrappy team. Um, I mean, I know it's early, but overlooked, you know, but we can't take anybody for granted. You know, every game we approach it like we're, comp- we're, we're focused on ourselves and uh, we got to get the best out of ourselves every single night. Uh, we didn't finish the game like we needed to tonight, you know, which is a little – um, disappointing, but we obviously we won the game, so that's that's what matters. But uh, we got to just continue. It's a long road trip, and we got to just take it game by game. And a little defensive lapse in, in the fourth quarter, like you said, but overall, 90 points, you know, uh, holding them <coughs> with the minimum amount in the third quarter. Yeah. Overall, where do you think the defense stands? Overall, it's pretty solid. I mean, we we were up. We knew they were going to make a run. They're young team that can you know, shoot the ball and, and attack the basket, uh, and they're at home. So we knew they were going to make a run. We just had to sustain the run and, uh, and close the game out. But I think overall, we, we put on a pretty good defensive show, uh, allowing 90 points. Um, I feel like if we can continue to uh, keep teams at 90 points, you know, under 100, we got a chance. All right, Smitty, not every shot, not every turnover is created equally. But when you have nine of them in the game, let's look at some of them, and you tell me, how egregious or okay that just happens within the flow of the game. Maybe he thought it was going to be a shot clock violation. I don't know. Hey, let, me, let me tell you this. I, I'm going to speak for myself as a former player. Sam can speak for himself. Okay. I'm going to beat myself up if you love the game. I'm going to beat myself up, me, probably James Harden, because there's a guy that we he's shown over the years how good he is with the basketball. That's the guy you want the ball in his hands. No, whoever wants nine turnovers. He's looking at three for 10, nine turnovers. Right now, he's beating himself up. And probably right now, because he's such a gym rat, he loves to be in the gym. He's trying to get himself going. I think the one thing is, as a coach, Sam knows better than me. I haven't coached in his league, but I'm not going to nitpick. If we won, thank you. I'm okay. If we won, I'm okay. Wait, let me ask Obviously, you, you want to build and get better. You want to build. You as a build. The games that scare you the most, if you're a coach, is the teams that you're supposed to be. See, I, never, I t- say this all the time. I never worried when we played the Lakers. Never worried we played Milwaukee. I knew my team was going to get ready. If I got a good team like Brooklyn, you know what I'm afraid? When we play a team like Detroit mm-hmm. or a team like OKC or a team that, quote, unquote, with a bad record, that we're supposed to be. Those are the games that keep me up at night because I know the natural tendencies of players because a veteran team like that, they understood that – they could play the way they play, and at the end of the day, James Harden or Kevin Durant could make a play and win the game. Okay, how about this? So, in watching James Harden with Sadiq Bay on him, Josh Jackson, he could not get past anyone. Do you think that's an issue with his conditioning, or do you think that's an age thing? Maybe Harden doesn't have the burst to get past these guys anymore. Uh, when, when did the season end? June to July for them last okay. year? He got past them last year. <laughs> Just Nine saying. games at this. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm saying, I mean, yes, age is going to catch up to all of us. It's not there yet for him. This one thing was a long regular season. I, I can go back to, I was, Sam was there too. We were playing four straight during that lockout. Yes, we were. That fourth game, I could not see. Sam. Couldn't feel my legs. I couldn't feel my I, I said, <laughs> what are we doing? I mean, this is not the exact same. But Sam, I look at it as right now, he is, they, no, he's not there yet. But it was not no regular offseason. This is the second year in a row that these guys have had a shortened yes. offseason. People keep forgetting. And in order to get back onto a regular schedule for next year, the NBA had to do this. And the players were not happy about this. And then this summer, you throw in the Olympics. And look at the guys that had to go to the Olympics and are trying to play right now. So you have to understand, and the coaches understand, this has been two off seasons that has been really short where players haven't had a chance for their body. More important, their mind to rejuvenate. People don't understand. When you're playing this much basketball in a two and a half year period, you get mentally burned out. I don't care how much you love the game. When I came from Europe and first played in the NBA, I played the whole season in Europe. 
came and went to three summer camps, and then went right into an NBA season. How tired of basketball you think I was after playing for a year and a half straight? I was exhausted. Sam, Sam I had a question. <clears throat> you rather have him playing and getting himself his time and in shape, or do you rather load manage him? I'd rather have him playing, <laughs> getting okay. nine turnovers, looking bad, playing himself into shape, and guess what? They are still winning games, and James Harden is not looking good. So if we can win games when he's not looking good, at a certain point, Smith, I tell you, he's going to get right. And Smith said something about that play. Who did you say was going to please that play <laughs> in the locker room? After Durant, that? the veterans. Who else? Uh, Durant, Millsap, LaMarcus Aldridge. Who's the other? Blake Griffin. That's right. And they're going to tell, yeah. and they can tell James, hey, James. It's going to be a next joke. Next time it happens, you got to get that ball. Well, you mentioned rest and not being on the court and figuring things out. Kyrie Irving uh, still hasn't played this season. And New York City has a new mayor. Eric Adams is his name. And here's what he had to say, according to Chris Mannix, that he's not changing the vaccine requirements. So Kyrie Irving still unvaccinated, up in the air for when he will return to the Brooklyn Nets. Smitty, when you see what's going on with Harden. Well, well, first of all, I don't like this. You're not changing it. That's fine. Kyrie has nothing to do with it. This is for everybody in residence, right? Okay. Just because I, I don't understand. This is not an NBA issue thing. This is the this city is of New York. This is New York. Right? Am I correct? I just want to make sure. Well, I, I think, hmm. If I'm to answer correct. that question, it's, okay, new mayor, there was a thought process that he was going to change the mandate and that Kyrie Irving would be able to play. But he did. But he, is the, he said it, he doesn't plan on it. Obviously, the medical people that he's listening to are saying this is the right thing for the city and the state of New York to do. Therefore, as a responsible adult, he is, even though he may not like it, he's sticking with it. He just didn't change the mandate. <laughs> not because of his lack of not liking Kyrie Irving. It was all for the health and safety for the entire city. 